B Monster Laboratory here. Today I'm going to connect a coffee pot to a local Wi Fi web server using the Node MCU ESP8266 12E development board. There we go, it's on. This is the Node MCU ESP8266 12E development board. And one way we'll be using it is as an access point, meaning it'll have its own network name or SSID and password and it'll be able to deliver web pages to any device that connects directly to it. The items that I'll be using for this project are the Node MCU ESP8266 12E development board. I'll also be using a breadboard and a five volt power supply. I'll also be using the wall adapter for that board for five volt power. I'll also be using a five volt relay I'll also need five female to male jumper wires. I'm going to use an extension cord, one that I can uh, cut and connect to the 5 volt relay. And I would recommend mounting it on something. I like to use uh, these boards that I buy here. Uh, they're just craft boards from, I think I got this at Walmart. And for safety reasons, it's always a good idea to cover your relay right before you activate it. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Now it's time to take my extension cord. I'm going to make a cut right down the middle here and I'm going to separate the positive wire from the negative wire. I like to do that with the razor blade and I can just follow the line here and I don't expose wire on either the positive or the negative side and I can separate it perfectly. Now that I've separated the two pieces of wire, the positive and negative, on my extension cord I'm going to cut the positive wire in half. I'm going to remove some of the insulation near the end of the cut so that I can insert the positive wire from my extension cord into my relay and you'll see that in just a second. If you're wondering which side is positive and which is negative, this is positive and this is negative. The negative prong is a little more broad and the positive prong is a little more narrow and it only goes in the outlet in one direction. Now I'm going to remove the insulation. It's just as easy for me to use scissors, so I just use a regular pair of scissors. Now that I expose the wire on one side, time to do the other. Now it's time to insert the bare wire into the common port and the normally open port of my 5 volt relay. Once you're done, it should look like this with the negative wire intact and the positive wire cut in half and inserted into the 5 volt relay. Here is a diagram of the extension cord connected to the relay. Mounting this is going to be pretty simple. I've got standoffs on here so I can have some room underneath the board. I've got holes in my piece of wood here. I just need to line it up and then hold it in place with a hex nut. And so I'll get that done real quick. Everything is mounted to a wooden platform here. So I'll go ahead and tell you what the connections are. Over here we have a positive and a, a negative connection. And then the orange is the IN port. Positive and negative are connected to the breadboard here, and then the IN port is connected to D2 on my development board here. On the other side of this board, you'll see a connection at the ground pin and then a 5 volt connection from the breadboard at the VIN pin. That's the red wire, and they're just plugged directly into the breadboard rail over here. Both the relay and the development board receive 5 volts from the breadboard power supply. The next thing we can do here is take a look at the code. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. But uh, some things you want to uh, keep in mind, you want to include these two libraries uh, when you uh, include your code. You also want to come down here, name your SSID, unnamed mine, the big show, which you will see in just a moment, and give it a password. My password is ESP8266TEST. If you come down here, you see LED1 pin and LED2 pin. I just have one connection at D2. And uh, the other one, I don't have anything connected, but you could certainly use it as another uh, way to operate another device. So that is available at D5, and you can put that on um, another pin if you desire to. But uh, so those are just called LED1 and LED2 pin. And right down here in the setup, you want to set LED1 and LED2 as an output. And then we'll come down here. Right down here is the HTML section, and it determines what your web page is going to look like, such as the callers, and uh, I named mine the uh, my web server, 
And it also says access point, AP mode. You can certainly change those, make those your own. And I name my status here, coffee pot on, coffee pot off. I just named the second one, even though I'm not using it, the LED2. Appliance number two on, appliance number two off. So you can name that whatever you want. If you have a maybe a coffee pot and um, I don't know, a light, you want to you wanna run both at the same time. I'm just using one, but you can certainly name that whatever you want. So you can make that part your own. So this is the code that we'll use for the web access point. The next thing you want to do is set up port forwarding for port 80 so that you can actually log on to your ESP8266 board and use it. So you want to do that through your router. And what we'll do, there's two ways that I'm aware of that you can do this. Uh, you can log into your router by your IP address, click on your connection down here, go to your internet connection here, click on properties, scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll get all the information here. You want to use the IP4 DNS servers uh, IP address. And once you get that IP address, you can go ahead and plug it into your web browser here and it will bring up a login for your router. But if you also if you have a TP link like I do, you can go up here and type in uh, TP link wifi.net and you can just go there manually by typing in the web address. If you have a TP link router, you, the best thing for you to do is to go to this YouTube video how to set up port forwarding on a TP link router. If you have a different brand, you can probably find that uh, posted by your uh, brand on YouTube. And for those who have TP-Link routers, I will include this link in the description below the video. So I've connected this to the coffee pot, and obviously it's not a permanent solution. If it were, I would have the relay totally contained, uh, and I'd have it off of the counter. I wouldn't have it near the sink. Right now it's open and unsafe. You'll never have this as a permanent setup. What I would do is contain all the wires in the relay in a junction box with the Wi-Fi board attached to the outside of that. And in this situation, I would mount it under the cabinet here with command strips just to keep it off the counter, keep it away from spills. So at the moment, I have a coffee pot plugged into the end of the extension cord here and the extension cord and power supply are plugged in right over here behind the toaster. Now we're ready to connect to our Wi-Fi board web server and you would do that the same way you'd connect any other device to your local Wi-Fi. At this point I want to connect to my SSID which I named the Big Show. So I want to select that and now it's time to type in the password. Here I type in my password uh, ESP8266 test. So once you've logged in this is what your website will look like, your web page that it's broadcasting. My web server it is an access point. You can see here that it says uh, coffee pot off status and there's an on button down here. I have appliance too. I don't have anything connected, but you could connect another item here if you want with another relay or a two channel relay. But as of now, it says the status of the coffee pot is off. And when I press this button, it should turn the coffee pot on. There we go. It's on and then turn it off. To turn it off, you press the button that says off. You can probably hear it starting to work. So I just turned it off. So that's how you do it. I've connected a coffee pot to this, but really you can connect any appliance or lamp or anything that you plug into a 110 outlet. You can connect to this relay and this Wi-Fi board. You just want to make sure that you're safe, you keep it away from water, and that the relay and everything is concealed so that you won't get injured. And uh, pretty simple to set up. Well, that's all I've got for today. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you again very soon.